All right, now, uh, both of you mentioned scanning and mining in the same breath. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do, I do want to emphasize that they are a different feature. The, the scanning right. feature is much bigger than just mining. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the scanning feature is, besides being an, an integral feature to Squadron 42, uh, scanning feature is just as important to the Persistent Universe. You, you're not just using it with mining, you, you'll use it for exploring, you'll use it for, for you know, discovering you know, uncharted you know, you know, areas of space, and, 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 and you'll use it in missions and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. And scanning is, will, will be a, an incredibly big factor outside of just mining. Right. Uh, for the purposes of this conversation, we have two of the gentlemen who work on the scanning portion. As, as you just said, the mm -hmm. DE team is focused on the mining portion. So while a little bit of mining discussion might sleep, uh, slip in here and there, I do want to emphasize that this is a discussion about scanning. Uh, we are do, we'll do our best to have a, a feature on mining, you know, uh, on its own because it's a feature that deserves its own focus. Absolutely. Uh, in the future. In I the think future. one way to kind of uh, talk about this uh, in uh, light of like the work we're doing is we're really working on the the pinging and scanning features uh, as um, uh, the the latest additions to three two. Gotcha. All right. So. In, 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 a, in, in a nutshell, I know we just did a whole segment on it, but for, because it just came out yesterday and not everybody has been around, maybe not everybody's seen ATV yet, give me the, the dime store version of peeing and scanning. Sure, so like in the game, uh, like especially in the PU and what we'll be implementing into Squadron 42, mm -hmm. uh, you only have information about, uh, about entities that are just around the ship uh, in your passive radar. Um, the exception being uh, the you know quantum travel points because they're so far away. Um, so it's oftentimes rather difficult to know about things that are outside of that that radar distance. Um, so what we wanted to do was give you some idea of um, you know hey is there are there objects around me that might be interesting to me um, in this first tier of uh, our pinging and scanning uh, um, feature implementation. Um, we give you the, the ability to do a ping. So uh, you, have a, you have a ping item on your ships now, and when you do do a ping, um, it, uh, it basically sends out a 360 degree ping that gives you um, some general information about objects that are outside of your uh, passive radar um, radius, mm -hmm. but within uh, this new larger uh, ping distance. So when you do a ping out, um, basically what you're doing is you're searching for signals, so EM, IR, and uh, we just implemented something called uh, RS, which is uh, the resource signature. Gotcha. So when you're able to detect those signatures that are outside of your radar distance, but within the ping distance, you get back some uh, basic info about uh, these entities, and we represent them as blobs. So um, the uh, entities that you detect will be put together, if they're close enough to each mm -hmm. other, um, as this blob entity, that gives you a, a general idea of like where, like in what direction these things are, but not exactly all the information that you need to know specifically about it. So they're kind of like breadcrumbs. And then um, when you get these um, bits of uh, these blob uh, identifying markers, you can then make a decision to go, you know what, I want to check that out. So you can fly toward it um, and uh, it will resolve when it gets it within your, your radar distance. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're implementing a feature in which you can actually uh, do um, a more focused uh, ping. So what that'll do is it'll give you uh, better resolution on, on that particular item. If it's if you focus enough and it's within your uh, within this uh, larger range of ping, and the signal's strong enough, then you'll actually um, get the same information as if it was in your radar. So could be really far away, but you, you do a, a general ping, you kind of know where it is, you start focusing your ping on it, and if, if it's, if, if it's um, within uh, a certain distance and the signal's strong enough, uh, you'll, you'll get for that ping duration uh, some, um, an actual like, position and some, some data about that object. So you'll know if it's a ship, you'll know if it's a mineable rock, mm -hmm. um, and those are the two things that we have uh, implemented so in far. Our, in our Initial tier zero right. implementation. All right. Now we've actually got a, a, a treat here. I don't. I honestly can't remember if I told you or not. But we do have a clip of, of kind of an, an entire the, the entire flow 
of, of scanning as it applies to uh, mining in this case. Cool. Uh, so I'd like to go ahead and play that, Tyler. And if you can see it on the screen right here. And why don't you tell us what we're looking at here? So obviously, we are flying in a, uh, this looks like a prospector, based on the HUD That's here. correct, yep. So we're flying a prospector. Um, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and move the control over to the, over the chat so we can actually see the video. Okay, thank you, there we are. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're flying along the surface. This looks like Selen to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your standard prospector HUD up above. Is there anything specific that we're looking at right now as to scanning? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, I think we're right now looking for targets. I don't and and how, how, are you, how would you identify a target here? Uh, uh, like so far, okay. we're getting some so go, of the AR markers. Okay, so go ahead and pause right here, Tyler. Now, I see this rock is discolored. Or, or, or it, 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 looks, it looks colored slightly differently. Uh, I don't think uh, that is the the particular feature we're looking for yet. Okay. I think, uh, because I haven't seen this video yet. Um, I, know, we, I really should have played this for you. That's fine. <laughs> we'll probably get to a, a section in which we go to the, uh, uh, the scanning or the mining uh, UI. Okay. I think that's where we'll see the, uh, right, the highlight for the, for the particular. Okay, so, okay. There we go. Yeah, so All right, so pause the, here. The scanning. Portion. All right, so, so, so we just switched to the scanning UI here. Correct. Th this is actually uh, the, uh, as I stated before, we integrated scanning into uh, the mining um, UI, mm -hmm. and so um, the this is uh, the mining um, interface, and it's uh, it utilizes what we've implemented as far as scanning is concerned mm -hmm. to give you the composition of that particular rock. Okay, and some of the information that we're seeing here, we're seeing the power transfer graph. Uh, again, this, this gets a little too, too into the mining stuff. We want to right. stay away from the mining stuff. So but. like what we imp implemented is uh, the info that's on the top right. It gives you the, uh, the percentages of, of composition for that particular rock so that you can determine whether it's worth uh, mining in this case. Gotcha. You're talking about the, the mass field there where it shows titanium yeah. and, right. it's the mass and, field and quartz. And the, the other portions. You could think of it as the scanning is um, the whole infrastructure is you have some object. It could be the ship right here. It has <clears throat> four layers of surface information. Uh, depending upon what the thing is, it's very detailed to that particular thing. For the mineable rock, I think it was um, the mass and then some properties about what determines the gameplay aspects of when it will break and stuff like that. Then you have the extended information, which is your detailed information, which is for ships, it will be your crew, your weapons, your mm -hmm. cargo. But for the rock, it will be the actual contents of what's inside. And that's the stuff that you see on the top right. It how much gold's in there, how much um, just dust or whatever the, the core insides of it are. Yeah. So that's what we're seeing on this part. Yeah, so we have two levels of scanning. Uh, they, they, all, they all happen uh, in, uh, in serial, but the uh, initial info information is, is, is rather easy to get. Um, and then uh, you'll go into a section in which, uh, after after time elapses and you've uh, you've hovered your cursor over the uh, target that you want to scan, mm -hmm. um, you'll get that uh, real simple um, surface surface uh, detail, and then I'm sorry the surface info, and then you'll go into the the detailed um, info dump that you get from uh, basically um, uh, like focusing in on that target. Right. We can clear the clip now, Tyler. Thank you. And one thing to note too with like with the mining UI, we know the very specific information that we're going to pull. So we organize it specifically to the mining infrastructure of, to basically give you information that'll help you just break the rock and cover information. There is another UI that's getting worked on, which is the pure scanning, where if you technically scan anything, mm -hmm. it shows the information more generically versus surface versus detailed. So when you unlock stuff, you get whatever that thing is. It's like, here's some information for you. Well, the mining is more specific to what the well, the gameplay around mining. Right. And we're implementing the um, uh, the bits of information you get for each entity type per entity type. And so uh, we do need to take some time to um, determine exactly what info you get from, uh, say, a ship versus mm -hmm. a rock. Gotcha. So, and, and that's one of those things that will obviously iterate over time. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, regardless, regardless of however the, this very first tier zero implementation you know go, goes out to you guys, uh, it, it will be like any other aspect. You know, we'll put out tier zero. Mm -hmm. We'll see their feedback. You know, we mm -hmm. want this information on the ship. We want this, and then we have to debate that internally. Do we want to give that information? Right. Uh, you know, it's you know, what what do we want them to have? What do we not want them to have? What maybe what maybe do we save for upgrades? Stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, but it, it's one of the best things about 
having a live environment in the middle of our game development. Is we can start with these tier zero implementations and really continue our development based uh, strongly on, on what they're uh, seeing. Right. Um, hey, Tyler? What? Our monitor is about to turn off in 20 seconds. Would you <laughs> mind coming and turn our <laughs> monitor back on? <laughs> <laughs> they just push the button. All right, so we yeah. do have some questions coming in from, from, the, from the chat here. Uh, the very first one from the live chat says, you literally just have to push any button on the back. It's on the back on the right. And that should go away. Thank you. Uh, if we didn't say it before, uh, uh, Tyler Nolan is heroically <laughs> filling in for our broadcast crew today. Our, our, our normal JJ is out on vacation. Um, can we, uh, a lot of the scanning we saw in ATV, uh, we only had the clip of the, of the mining, but we, we saw some great visuals of just scanning space, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, the and the different, you know, blurbs that come, it was all three-dimensional. Uh, the very first question in the chat says, are there any 2D options for scanning? Um, not at this time. I think, um, I'm not really sure how we'd, we'd want to, like, I I'm not sure if it's really great to, like, limit it to 2D. Um, uh, one aspect we can talk about is um, we want to be able to um, represent these blobs and these bits of info on your radar. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't gotten to that particular stage in uh, scanning or pinging yet. So that's something that we want to um, actually, you know, uh, we, we do show you where they are in space. Mm -hmm. But transferring that to, to uh, the radar, because uh, we need to work with the UI team in order for that to happen, um, we haven't gotten to that stage yet. So I think that's one place where we can represent it in 2D. All right. Now, in addition to taking questions live from the chat, we also put up a thread in Spectrum like we normally do for the folks who can't be here watching us live. Uh, people were able to submit their questions uh, over the last 24 hours and then vote on which ones they wanted to see answered most. Uh, the number one question from that thread said, will we be able to jam scanners on other ships in order to mask items of interest from others for mining or detection? I would love to do that. Uh, we haven't gotten to that stage yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be super cool if, you know, we had that kind of, you know, that, that uh, Rochambeau gameplay where um, you, want to, you want to do, you know, like what, what makes this good? Mm -hmm. And then like, what's a way to counterbalance that so you can maybe defend against scanning? Because sure, you know, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to find out info about a ship maybe you don't want that info to you know be discovered so yeah. implementing things like uh you know stealth gameplay uh something which would be interesting would be if you had a ship that was really good at being a pirate ship mm -hmm. and you wanted to smuggle cargo mm -hmm. we could make uh, uh you know sections of that ship in which they're completely cloaked from that uh data or you know they can they can put out you know false signatures if you wanted to uh, yeah. Say, you know, just just carrying a slag, for instance. Yeah, Chris has talked about that gamesmanship for for a long time. Yeah, you know, it, it's 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 it seems kind of obvious, but it does it does bear mentioning sometimes uh, that you have to design all the ways in which something is supposed to work mm -hmm. before you design all the ways in which you're supposed to yeah. counteract yes. them. Yeah, let's let's it, get something working first. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it 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 seems kind of obvious, but it's it's in you know we all we all get excited. We're all, you're all excited for things like pirate gameplay mm -hmm. or, or 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 just straight out you know villainous gameplay and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of quote we, we deal with this a lot. Of time where folks are like you know tell us more about pirate gameplay and tell us more about about I just want to be I just want to be a giant ass that's all I want to <laughs> do in the universe and, and it, it's it's always it's always helpful to remind folks that we have to build all the ways in which lawful legal correct behavior are supposed to function and then we'll go to figuring out all the ways that you can circumvent it you can avoid it stuff like that and one of those ways we're prototyping um, is the idea of, we have the four layers of surface information what if it, you could spoof it? So mm -hmm. pretend we have a ship, and when it appears on your radar, it automatically just gives you the four information, friendly, foe, you faction, such. What if we had a way to provide players a way to tweak those settings so when it automatically comes up, that pirate ship is actually claiming he's a UEC-friendly police ship. And then you look at it, and you're like, wait a minute. So you start scanning. It's like, oh, no, he's, he's an asshole. He's going to kill me. He's a pirate. I'm gonna go run away. So there's some things that we're toying with to get that level of gameplay, and one of those was the transponder. So we're hoping to flush that out in the, in the future, but 
uh, the scanning stuff is going to bring some fun stuff. Here. Right, and then like one one way we, we can uh, we can pretty easily do some of this jamming uh, gameplay in, is because the pinging system is complete is wholly dependent on signal. Uh, if we uh, we could either return back um, uh, you know lower signals or just give you the ability to be more stealthy, and because uh, your signals will drop to the point where they're not detectable even by the ping. Uh, you just won't show up uh, as a uh, as part of a blob when you do the, do the ping out. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that that calculus. Uh, the, the 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 ping goes out, and uh, and obviously I don't know how much of this will be in the tier zero implementation. Mm -hmm. let, let's just let's just talk experimentally here. The ping goes out, and you're in space. So you send a ping out, and the ping hits Mark's ship. I imagine there has to be some kind of calculus involved. What, what, is his trans, what, are, what are his EM transmissions like? You know, to determine whether he's going to show up, how strong, how much information is going to show up, you know, mm -hmm. what, whether he's going to show up at all. Kind of like that. It, what, what, can we, what can we talk about like that? Is, is that something that's being thought of now? Yeah, so we did it really simply. Um, or tier zero. Tier right. Zero. Well, I think this is just the, the best way to, to kind of understand mm -hmm. uh, how, how our signals, uh, like the signal strengths and distances work. Um, I think in the past, maybe that was a little bit obscured, and it's kind of hard to figure out, you know, if I have a thousand EM, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. So um, what we did was uh, we just have a fall off of each signal uh, unit um, over over a meter. So if you are emanating a thousand EM, um, it drops down to zero at a thousand meters out. So you have this radius of signal that is constantly falling um, from uh, your position. The, um, the, there's your passive radar uh, range, and if, if this is you, and then uh, this is like, say you can look out 10,000 meters. Mm -hmm. If there's a ship uh, that, uh, whose signal fall off is within your passive radar uh, range, it shows up on your radar. So uh, if, that, if that ship was emitting 1,000 EM, and your uh, your radar uh, radius was 10,000, then at just under 11,000, you should be able to see, uh, uh, meters away, you should be able to see that ship because the signal uh, from the EM will drop down to one, uh, but will be within your, your passive radar. What we did for the ping was, there's a secondary radius um, that uh, uh, when you do the ping, you can now detect uh, signals that are at one or higher, but within this larger radius. Okay. So um, it's really just a, a, a simple calculation of what is your detectable range and what is the, um, the uh, levels of signal strength that are without it. And uh, just adding those two values up means whether they're going to be visible or not. Gotcha. So and obviously your detectable range will be determined by the sum total of your components and how you're running them, how you've got them tuned. Correct. Stuff like that. Yep. And then the total of how far you can ping or how effective, again, your, your sensor package and whether you've got an upgraded something like from a Terrapin or whether you've got a less than stellar one in something else. Right. I don't want to, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. What ship has terrible scanning? I don't know. If I, if I give a name, we'll have a Reddit thread. Right. And so like, <laughs> I think, I think one, one issue that, uh, that we need to solve is that we're not great at messaging out all this data to mm -hmm. the player. And uh, so we need to, uh, once we implement the system, we need to work on the UI so that you can tell whether you're going to be detectable uh, to the player uh, or to you know, other ships, whether that's uh, on, the, on your HUD or it's in your, um, your signal MFD. Um, and we can give you like some simple, um, maybe a, a, some kind of bar which you need to be under so that you're undetectable. Uh, yeah. by, by ships. Yeah. Well, at That's, least with this value, you know technically how far out someone would be able to see you. Right. And if we have that ambient signature, you know, like, this is talking about with no ambient signature. Mm -hmm. So if it's 1,000 EM, I could see that person 1,000 EM. Mm -hmm. But if you know the ambient signature is 500, you know um, you could be, it basically cuts your signature down to 500 because it's subtraction. So now you, you get that kind of stealth gameplay where if you know if you lower your signature just about right and you know what the ambient is, you know how far out someone could theoretically see you. Gotcha. And I do want to reemphasize that we're using 
numbers like 500 and 1,000 as arbitrary. examples. They're <laughs> arbitrary examples, guys, before, before somebody goes in there and theorographs how terrible the game will be with only 1,000 meters and stuff like this. Well, we're, we're using we, round numbers to... We shoot out these numbers just to play around with ideas in our head, mm -hmm. and since it gives us ideas of, okay, 1,000, what does 1,000 mean? 1,000 meters, 1,000 EM, it just helps us as uh, a human yeah. figure out what's going on in our heads versus what's going in the game. Right. Uh, so okay, yeah. returning back from the live chat, there's a question, how can we defeat active scanning? Is there an e-war mechanic coming? Uh, obviously, like, like we just said, we, you want to build the system first before we you know, figure out how, all the different ways to, to defeat it. But I, 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 one might imagine that, that a, a scanner suite would be susceptible to a, an EMP. Just sure. like anything else in the ship. Yeah, you can you cut the power to the ship. You cut the power to the scanners. Sure, you should be able to shut it off. Uh, you know, there are other subtle ways we could do that. When, in which, because again, this is just simple math as far as your detectability. Uh, if we have a way just to reduce your signals, or at least reduce your detectable signals, um, and have a reduction in what your, you know, what your ship is emitting, um, that could be one real easy way to give you that kind of um, a way to counter, counteract that uh, being able to be pinged. Uh, this next question, you already mentioned this. Well, are we going to have the option of a shallow but wide angle ping versus a narrow but deeper ping? That's exactly what we're playing right now. Um, it, can we talk about uh, how, how many different versions are in our, in our tier zero? Are we talking about one wide and one narrow uh, kind of thing? No, I think it's like it goes up to 128 uh, times, which is just a, a, and I think it goes up by factor of two. So if one, two, four. So it's like a slider. Then. It, you'll be yeah, you'll be able to right. you'll be able to adjust. So it's that's, like 360. It starts at 360. Yeah, 180. Or 180. I think it's yeah. I think it's 180. And, 180. and then it it, it starts 90. going down to smaller increments. Uh, I think 90 might be the next one. Um, I, not. I'm not exactly sure what our increments are, yeah. but we'll have I more than think, two. Yeah. I think eight levels of scanning in which, the um, the angle of your of your uh, detectability. Uh, of the things that you're detecting becomes more narrow, but the reward is that you're able to uh, get results back from further away. Okay. Now, when you narrow that 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 angle, can you then also angle that around the ship? Do you? It, it, does it always reduce to the front, and you have to turn your ship? You can, but yes, you you turn the ship by, to do that. Um, I think what we'll be able to do is for ships that have the ability to have a scanner that's on a gimbal, like. Terrible. Sure, or the uh, the Acula is another one um, that uh, you'll be able to do these uh, these pings and scans uh, directionally without having to turn the entire ship. That's the whole point of that. Gotcha. Um, from also from live chat, uh, will all ships be able to scan? Um, that's a decision we haven't made yet. But uh, any ship that has a uh, ping or a scanner item on it uh, should be able to. Sorry, Argo pilots. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, uh, the, uh, the entire uh, Argo owners club go make a thread. Now I, I'm ju I just pulled Argo out of my butt, people. That's just um, what will make from from back from the thread where the people voted on questions. Mm -hmm. What will make the scanning skill based that you can improve yourself in? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, there is an inherent skill in that uh, because. Uh, you do have uh, the ability to do narrower scans. It obviously reduces the angle which you can detect things. It goes so, farther. Right. So you can, um, one, one uh, feature we're having is that you do the general ping, you kind of find out the blob info, um, and then you can focus on those blobs, do narrow scans, and get more info back. Um, and that is one feature that we're implementing at the moment. And one thing to note with the blobs is when you do a 360, your resolution isn't that good, so if there's a bunch of objects here, the blob might be just just gigantic thing. You have mm -hmm. no idea what's inside we of it. We saw it with, with the images with all the different yeah. you know, blobs. You, you can see some big ones in the distance. You don't know if there's one object, a dozen objects. So it's like you do that high, low resolution, you see a bunch of things, you have no idea what's in it. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're still balancing this, but uh, the general idea is the lesser signal you're getting, the larger the blob is, yeah. because it's you're getting less deterministic uh, mm -hmm. info about uh, exactly where that, uh, uh, that entity might be. And that's where changing your focus angle to focus in comes in because if, you, if all these things are on the table and it's just the gigantic blob and then I do a focus angle, it'll cut through and maybe I'll have three blobs now. I'll have one for that, one for this, and then one for this drink. So the 
the more you focus in, the more odds that you're going to resolve what it might be and shrink down the blobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, as far as uh, the different components, uh, we'll uh, from the live chat it says, will scanning capability be based on a scanner type size, like some of the other components? Like of the component system we have, we have size, we have class, mm -hmm. and we have grade. Uh, will there be size, class, and grades of scanners? Uh, not for the first tier, but mm -hmm. that is something that we'd want to do for the future. Um, you know, simple things like, you know, the, the, how powerful the scan is, how, how great the resolution is, uh, how much power they use. Um, when we eventually get to being able to, do, to uh, damage internal items, you know, how, 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 much, uh, how many hit points it has, mm -hmm. uh, what their wear is going to be. These are, these are all things that, that we, we'd yeah. like to do. Like an industrial class scanner sure. can, 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 can do more, more charges per, you know, per hour without wearing right. down. But uh, In theory crafting, you could even have something where if you have a less powerful scanner, maybe you can't pierce through a capital ship. Maybe it can't pierce through the shields. I mean, there's stuff. There's all sorts of fun stuff we could try mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, can you scan people? That is part of uh, the plan for the future. We do want to be able to um, use the, the ping so that you can, you can detect life forms as well. Uh, but uh, sure, like, you know, I want to know what's in your pocket. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could just see, uh, I could just see spending half my time doing internal scans to see if somebody's on my ship. Well, Has somebody jumped onto my ship? Okay, good. Well, like every five minutes. Has somebody jumped onto my ship? The fun part about this whole um, scanning system is the way that it was designed, at least on the engineering side, we could technically implement this thing to scans anything. Um, at least when we were testing it out, this won't be in 3.2, but we were using actors and items and vehicles and random stuff to scan and see what we could do. And in my testing, I had an actor on the ground, or a player, and I scanned him and I was getting all of his items. And then I put him in a ship. I scanned the ship and I was getting the player. And if in my further testings, I even made it so I could scan further on that actor and get his items. So hmm. the system allows us to be flexible in what we want to provide the players. And we've been doing a lot of testing to see what we want to give mm -hmm. and what not. Um, but at least for 3.2, we, we're not going to go that far, but the system will allow it depending upon how, we, how yeah. far we want to right. take and it. And as kind of a preemptive yeah. move, uh, the when we when this was first prototype the the ui for the pinging and scanning was on the uh the ship hud and we moved it now to the player visor so that uh, we theoretically could just uh put it on the player and then uh have a very similar type of gameplay in which you scan uh you have, they, sure but you scan the, the targets you're scanning are people instead of instead of like other space entities Gotcha, and yeah. we'll continue on that too. It's like it's the interesting thing where we're trying to uh, prototype on the cover is like we have uh, this thing called a data bank, and that's the thing that holds all our information of what's active, what you scanned, and such like that. The player has one, and the ship has one. So when you sit down in the ship, all the information goes to the ship, and that relays it down to all the appropriate people. Um, the cool thing is we're still in the prototyping stage. Is but if you sit down on the ship and you start scanning something and it stores the information when you leave, we have the ability to grab that information now stored into the player. So there's some interesting things we could do where um, you go sit in a ship, you uncover some information, now it's in the data bank. What if we could take this information, put it on an item, and then you could then give it to someone else who mm -hmm. could then use that mm -hmm. information? And even like before that, uh, one thing we can do is you, you should be able to share that that same info off uh, to other you know, members of your party or uh, other crew members. And so if I do find a target that I want to attack, um, there, should, there should be no reason why I can't, like everyone that's like in a turret or uh, is, is um, uh, controlling some other weapon can't be given that same info. And then it should show up on the radar and then um, we, we need to work on the HUD yeah. so that you should be able to message, hey, everyone attack this guy. There's, there's, there's absolutely no shortage of work for our UI team. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, there, there are many teams who work tireless hours uh, in Star Citizen's development, and the, uh, the UI team, I don't know if they work the hardest, but the, they're definitely 
they're definitely up there as far as busy. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, every aspect of the game requires some UI element. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they touch every single aspect. Yeah, you actually touched on the follow-up question I was going to have when you said, when you said, you feed the information to the ship, and then the ship can feed it down to the crew members. Right. Um, which, 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 was, which was a neat idea, which, was a, uh, which sparked a question about how, and you, I think you just answered it, where you do the scan and everybody in the turrets I mean, automatically gets the information sure. and stuff since it's appearing on their helmet right. visor. Uh, the, the next question from the, from the uh, chat, from the live chat, says, uh, will we, would we be able to, sh to share that information out with other ships you know, in, in our group? Like, we're, we're, we're flying a posse. Sure. You know, it, we, we, like if, and one of them is a Terrapin. Like, okay, Terrapin, you're responsible for the scanning. So mm -hmm. the Hornet and the Saber and the Freelancer, they don't have to worry about scanning. The Terrapin is doing all the scanning. Can he feed that information to the other ships? Yeah, there's no reason why we can't. Uh, so the, uh, like I mentioned, the other team, uh, the, the uh, gameplay uh, feature team is working on the group system. So there is no reason why uh, once you populate... Um, your object data bank with uh, some info that you can't share it to other members, um, including other members that aren't in the same ship um, and that are part of the same party. That's that's cool. It's I know it seems like such a scan. You say it's scanning. It does. It doesn't seem like a, a, a real sexy feature, but I, I'm, I'm what it can provide players. I know it's is, yeah. just can be like huge. I know it's it's. I'm sorry. I, I don't often kind of fan out here and whatever, but, but seeing these these baseline features that just open up so many avenues mm -hmm. of gameplay gets it's, me. That is like, right now for 3.2, we're just getting like the base core stuff mm -hmm. in, but the, we're designing it with all these in the, ideas in mind that we could try out this stuff. It's like, all right, the information that we're storing, all the scan data is so lightweight and tiny that we could transfer it to other players. Then the question becomes, how do we do that? And then that's when we can start playing with it Oh, we have this fleet system now. Let's start using that to send information. It, it opens up. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, like getting this information and encapsulating it into like this this item that's in your object data bank allows us to do gameplay. Like, uh, you know, what does what does selling of information mean? What does data actually mean as far as a commodity? Um, and so we can, um, you know, a mission could be uh, go find out precisely what. Um, what the coordinates of this target are, and then uh, you know, come back to me with that info, and I'll give you some UEC for it. And then once we have it working, we find out how we break it. Yeah, I know. How could someone <laughs> oh, yeah. the packets? Oh. How could someone change the data? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> half, half, half the questions that are coming in are, are people wanting to know how to break it. I mean, Can we send out decoys mimicking an asteroid rich I mean, environment? Why not? The way sure. that the, the data, we call it um, encoding, um, once the data is encoded, we don't have any information of what that target is anymore because we're supposed to be able to have this information offline. So if you have a way of just disrupting the data or falsifying the data, there's no way that other player would know. So it opens up that interesting gameplay if we could unlock that somehow. Unless they somehow had a better scanner suite than your decoy scanner sure. suite. You know, it, it's always a game yeah. of, of cat, a, and a, a cat and mouse gamesmanship. It's, you know, like you said with the decoy, um, you know, I, I get a grade C asteroid decoy thing that I put out there and it, it transmits like it's an asteroid and it's designed oh, to fool. Oh, sure. It, it'll, and it'll fool all, all sensors grade C or below, you know, that it thinks it's an asteroid. But if I come in with a, with a you know, I, I, I upped my power plant so I can afford a, a, a sensor grade B, you know, I'm going to see that asteroid, but it's going to be a little fuzzy. It's going to be a little like the data doesn't quite look right. right. And if I have an A, it just tells me that's a decoy, you dumbass. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. I, I, again, I'm theory crafting here, but that, that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, gamesmanship that we've been talking about. Yeah, that, that so seems years. super mean, but yeah. uh, but it's just data. So uh, yeah, there's no reason why we can't um, uh, give you the ability to manipulate that. So you know, we we could do things with hacking. You know, you you can't spoof that data by hacking it or uh, you can maybe even hack the actual um, the data you get back from your own your own scan, mm -hmm. and so you're you're spoofing it on a, on an item level. Which or would be cool. even more theory crafting. What happens if you scan something you're not supposed to? You have the information, and then someone comes onto your ship, corrupts all the data because you shouldn't have that information, and then leaves off into the night. Mm -hmm. It opens up some fun possibilities. Actually, you know <laughs> what? You're, you're right up a point too. Uh, so one uh, one aspect of scanning that we uh, we have um, scheduled in the future is, you know, I don't, 
I, I don't oftentimes want to be scanned, and so we need to um, inform the uh, anybody that's in a ship that's being scanned. Hey, you know, someone's scanning you. Right now, uh, the ability to scan is automatic, but um, the, you know, alarm bells should should go ringing as, so, as as soon as you're being scanned because it's usually kind of a, a threatening gesture. Mm -hmm. So if you have you know huge a huge pirate ship that's uh, that's uh, scanning the contents of your cargo bay, I kind of want to know that information. Uh, what about the difference? Uh, a big uh, sci-fi trope: the difference between passive scans and active scans. You, you, you know, a, a passive scan that might not let the 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 uh, recipient of your scan know that they're being scanned versus, and it it, it returns a little bit of data sure. versus a active scan, which sure. will return a lot more data, but inform the person. Well, that, that kind of goes scanned. with the the idea of the the transponder that we're toying with, um, where it provides the information, but if you turn it off, you have to actually scan it to uncover it. Mm. And that also goes into the gameplay of if you falsify it, that's how someone could go, oh, he's, he's not a UEC pirate. He's not a UEC, he's a pirate. <laughs> and we can like yeah. also allow you to um, either um, like marking these items uh, or the, the categories of items as uh, active scannable or passive scannable, or uh, and then uh, even allow gameplay in which you can actually change the um, the status of of that type on your ship by doing things like you know getting getting a, a better jammer or having a ship that inherently has more st stealth capability uh, in that regard. Right now, I'm just thinking about flying around the universe with a fake transporter, that's a, a transponder that says I'm Tyler Witkin. I don't know why. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be Tyler Wicken? <laughs> Tyler Nolan has some yeah. thoughts about that. All right, what, what else we got? We're, we, we, are, we are fast approaching the end of the show, guys. Oh. We're, we're, we're flying through this. Let's see. Um, really you're doing great. You're actually covering quite a few of these questions ahead of time. Will Scanny be attached to the ship HUD or the helmet HUD? We already covered that. It's the helmet HUD. Uh, we, uh, assuming you can ping and scan objects on planetary surfaces, but can you ping and scan below the surface or inside buildings? I'm assuming if we're talking about being able to scan inside ships at some point, being able to scan inside buildings wouldn't be too far a sure. stretch. Sure. I, I, th I think that's something that uh, we we'd want to implement, and um, you know, uh, I think we'd want to do other interesting bits of that uh, along with that feature. Like, uh, you know, maybe it, it is harder to to um, uh, penetrate buildings that are of like stronger material, um, and give you some kind of uh, some gameplay um, that. Isn't just you know a is a scannable or not? Okay, uh, here's an interesting question in the live chat. Will there be a delay between pings so that you can't just spam pings? Yes, it's it, it's part of the uh, ping item itself at the moment. Uh, we haven't quite gotten to balancing that yet. Uh, obviously, when we're developing it, we want to be able to ping as quick as possible to see the results. Yes. But uh, yeah, that that is a, a feature in which um, there'll be a cooldown time so that uh, you don't you, you can't go crazy with the pings. And at the same time, I mean, we're talking about the idea of if you ping, maybe you spike up your power a little yeah. bit more. Mm -hmm. So if you continue to do it, maybe you're going to drain your power, and then someone's going to go, hey, there's someone pinging over there. It comes up to you, but you're yeah. not prepared because yeah. you have no power. Maybe your overall <laughs> EM emissions go up with each ping. I yeah, think that'd be the, the Ideally, you want to wait till your EM go down a bit before you ping again. Right. Otherwise, you're just, you're just broadcasting your own location. Right, here, here I am. Like, but uh, that, you know, that, that's the whole push-pull gameplay mechanic of, yes, you're getting inf information back about the things you want to find, but you're also making yourself a vulnerable, uh, vulnerable target by announcing to everyone that, that you're there. Okay. Uh, so to piggyback on the, the, the notion, and again, this, this is an in tier zero of being able to, to share your scan information with other ships. Uh, assuming we, we get to that point, you know, we've, we've talked about how that's our, our intention, our desire. Uh, what, about the, what do we think about the possibility of combining the information like like you're, you're like here's the stanton system you know uh terrapin one is in this quadrant terrapin two is in that quadrant we'll, you know all scanning and then sending our data so they all show up in some kind of uh, collective I think that makes sense map. so i've at least in the scanning encoding section i've already been anticipating like merging stuff together so when you uh, basically encode the information of something that you have in loft we time stamp it with the server time. And so when we merge stuff together, we try to make sure we get the latest information. So if someone scanned Stanton two days ago or someone scanned it an hour ago, when you merge the information, we're gonna have the latest. 
So combining stuff is definitely part of the infrastructure, but how we go about doing that from a gameplay standpoint, well, when we get there, we'll probably have to <laughs> scratch our heads. Say, All right, we could merge it this way and that. And yeah. Sure, but like having, having like a database that represents, you know, the sum total of all the info you want uh, is, I think, totally desirable. Yeah. And yeah. it does have to happen, at least for the player and the vehicle, because they, like right. I said, they have two data banks. If we have two sets of scan information, we have to merge them somehow that makes sense to the player. Sorry, I, 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 you started laughing because I was laughing. And I wasn't laughing at what you were saying. I'm laughing because at the sheer number of questions of people that just want to want to know how to defeat scanning. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like these people are excited about the scanning uh, system, and they should be, but <laughs> there's so many people that are like, yes, but how do I beat it? Uh, th this person wants to know about you know, Aurora cargo boxes that, that, can, that can shield from scans. Uh, this person wants to know sure, about the effectiveness of, of things like the Eclipse or the, Horn or the, uh, the, the, or the Hornet Ghost and being able to avoid scans and stuff like that. It's, 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 ex it's exciting to me. It's just, we again, remember. balance. I mean, yeah. if you have a ship that's supposed to smuggle stuff, you want to be able to hide it so when someone scans it, they're not going to see it. But at the same time, if you're in a section where you have a very high-powered scanner, you should be able to detect it mm -hmm. if the appropriate gameplay settings oblige because that's the idea of balance push. You have your way of hiding, but someone has a higher way of detecting. It's going back and forward. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of iteration on it to get that feel and mm -hmm. fun out of it, but it's it's going to come one day. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, yeah. Uh, I can see that uh, uh, our first um, goal after getting this basic scanning and pinging uh, in the in three two is uh, find a way to tie it to missions. So you know you want to be able to uh, use your ping to to generally find out where a target might be, mm -hmm. and then uh, as, you, as you start doing more focused pings and then eventually scan it, that, that will be the, the mission completion because uh, you, you got basic info of where things are, and then now you, you're trying to find out which thing that you found is the, is the, mm -hmm. the correct target. Now that's scanning to complete a mission. What, 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 you know, I, I, was, I was actually talking to, um, oh, I'm so bad with names. Oh, Luke. Uh, Luke Presley, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, the, the, about the possibility, and again, nothing committed, but the possibility of using scanning to find mes missions, like like messages in a bottle, kind of like the, like the old ICC missions, where where you know you went you went into the building, and you found something that triggered a triggered a mission, sure. but instead of it being in the same location every time, it's you know it's an item out that spawns randomly throughout mm -hmm. space, and, and you know missions that can only be find, found and begun through exploration and through scanning. Yeah, a simple way you could do that is if, you, you know, hey, uh, we make an emergency transponder, mm -hmm. right? So, like, yeah, it's, it's somewhere in space near, near Stanton. And so, yeah, go fly around it, uh, around Stanton, do your pings. Yeah, you find some, some maybe you know, worthwhile candidates for uh, the targets. Uh, eventually, you, you resolve one that, that you scan and is, is that uh, item you're looking for, and you know, that, that spawns the mission for you. Uh, 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 will scanners uh, use a utility hard point? Are, are they, a, a, some, uh, is there a physical item on the exterior of the ship? Currently, they're uh, internal items, uh, okay. just like power plants and shield generators. Um, now, ships like the Aquila have a giant scanner suite that comes up out of the top. Correct. Uh, it's, that's not fully implemented. In fact, the implementation we have, I know people know, it's just a turret without Two any <laughs> a turret without any weapons on it. Um, but uh, I think we'd want to uh, implement it by putting it on the actual uh, turret well, item. Yeah, the tier zeros get it. Well, she put it <laughs> yeah. on a location. There's a little Hollywood fakery yeah. to, 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 get it, to get the system going. I mean, that's what we've done with systems in the past mm -hmm. until we're actually able to get their actual physical location. So further out, yes, you're going to have locations on them, especially the one you just said. The, the Aquila, uh, you Aquila. don't want to try saying Aquila? I, we have too many. Well, right I don't know here. if it's Acula or Aquila. I guess Aquila sounds like Dracula. But uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, uh, was, uh, uh, my rule of thumb: if it sounds like tequila, you're correct. <laughs> <I see. laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, regarding regarding uh, you know externalizing these items, um, I think that uh, my my personal opinion is until we get uh, the ability to uh, to damage internal items, um, it's it's. Uh, 
Like we need to get to that step first because uh, you know I want to be able to knock out people's power plants and the shield generators um, from outside the ship. Um, and I think when we get that to that point, then uh, whether the um, the scan item is uh, defeatable by you know shooting the the scan uh, item that's internal on the ship or by destroying the 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 uh, the turret itself on the Aquila, the Aquila, uh, will, will be a thing. Mm -hmm. I think it goes back to get it working and then work towards how we could break it and move it around a bit mm -hmm. after that. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one more question. I've got time for two more. I want to try to squeeze in here. Uh, what about the, we've talked about being able to, fo to, to, to alter the range. You know, either from 360 down to, you know, 360 in kind of a, a short range to, you know, 45 degrees and a, and a, and a farther range kind of thing. Uh, what about altering the type of scan, like versus, for scanning for heat versus IR versus EM versus stuff like that? Yeah, so uh, something we have tiered up uh, in a future, a future tier is uh, the, you do want to be able to uh, filter out the results. And so, yeah, if I'm only looking for a resource signature, uh, give me the ability to, um, you know, go on my radar and go. You know, the ping is only for, is only for resource, please. Um, that is something that we have planned and we'd love to implement, uh, just not for tier zero. Yeah. And I would imagine if you if you're going to filter, yeah, you get like maybe a better resolution result for that thing. Uh, Can be. Oh well, yeah, I was saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why why else would you would you filter something down? It, it, you you know, if if it's all the same results without between filtering and not filtering, sure. you might as well scan for everything just right. in case you know, so that you know something's coming. I think the filtering will probably be on the uh, not what you actually get uh, as far as the results of the ping, but more the info that you see. Um, so I want to filter out the uh, everything but the resource signatures. And so you kind of get rid of the, the other noise that you may not be looking for. Uh, and, and last question, it's, it's a bit ahead, so you know, I, I don't expect to have an answer here, but uh, uh, what about, what do we think about uh, different atmospheric uh, or spatial effects that, that, that uh, will affect scanning? Like, uh, mm. like the old Star Trek II, I'm in a nebula, sure. so sensors don't work, or this person's, I'm, you know, I'm down on, I'm down on Damar and there's a sandstorm you know, coming. What, 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 I think the ambient stuff is, is yeah, right up that alley. That ties up with the ambient. Mm -hmm. um, we have an ambient system that's not quite into the game yet, but future. Um, it's like on the planets, you would have different levels of different ambients, um, infrared, EM, that's basically all over in pockets. And there was the idea of having the ecosystems have different levels so that when you're on the planet and you're going over and scanning stuff, maybe different things appear because you're in a swamp. There's heating up pits or something that increase the ambient temperature versus if you're in the top atmosphere, there's more stuff than if you're below. But if you're below, maybe the cross section increases because that's how you hide in the planet. But yes, there are things we're toying with with the ambient system. I think maybe one simple way to look at it is the ambient system would, would almost be like a, the reverse effect of what you might, um, how the math works. And so say something, uh, uh, some point is emitting like a thousand EM. It, um, what that may actually mean is that it reduces the EM detection uh, by, by that amount for things that are just around it. So they, they act as a, 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 like a, a mask, mask. Yeah. exactly. So if, yeah, going with that, if you had a pocket of like sand, maybe it increases the cross section, the ambient noise a bunch. So if you're inside of it, no one could really find you. Yeah, and you know, that, 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 that's ultimately the gameplay we, wanted, we want to accomplish. Like, you know, I want to be able to hide behind an asteroid or, you know, I want to, mm -hmm. I want to fly near, near a star and that makes me less detectable or for e, or EM or IR, but I'll, I'll probably melt. Yeah. But Hey, you want to do the kid Icarus thing? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, all I want to do is, is uh, 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 Idris versus Idris in a nebula. You know, and, and you know, after, after years of getting used to scanning, and after after everybody's like living and dying by their scans, you know, and then these situations that, that blow the results out of water. Like, I can't tell what's what. Sure. And, yeah. and being forced to, you know, get everybody used to this and make it a, a normal everyday part of their life. You know, scanning is integral to, to everything. And then you find ways to take it away and obscure it <laughs> and, and make interesting gameplay. All right. Well, that about does it, guys. Uh, we're going to play a, a, a short video. And when we get back, we'll do the wrap up. So stay tuned.